the 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Now before we get into all of the details, it's important to show you what is the main difference between the Quadrifoglio and the standard Stelvio. Well that can be summed up with this knob right here. This of course is the DNA switch that gives you your different vehicle settings. And on this one, you have one new one. It is of course race mode. Now switching into race mode changes the exhaust note. Also, more importantly, firms up the suspension, gives you more aggressive shift points, and overall just makes this vehicle way more aggressive. It also disables all of the active safety features, so when you put that mode on, you are on your own. California roads be like this sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna panic and I'm not gonna go all the way into normal mode. I am simply gonna hit this button here and it dials back the suspension. And it does smooth things out actually quite a bit. Not full on soft, but it puts it in the middle of the three suspension settings. Because yeah, this is adaptable suspension. Now, if this is still a little too rough, and honestly, it is, it does not pass the Starbucks test, that's for sure, because I'm spilling coffee everywhere. We can dial it back all the way to normal, and now we have suspension that is actually gonna smooth out all the ruts for us, which is perfect for California roads like this. Yeah, not all the roads in California are super smooth. Holy crap, that's a big canyon. Where the standard Stelvio comes with a fairly potent 280 horsepower inline four, this one has a six cylinder with twin turbochargers. In fact, it was co-developed with Ferrari and is very similar to the engine that you would find in the 488 GTB. Here, it puts out 505 horsepower. Torque is 443 pound-feet. It's connected through a strengthened ZF eight-speed automatic transmission, and it powers all the wheels thanks to a rear-biased all-wheel drive system. I think it's pretty safe to say that based on facts and figures, this should be my favorite SUV ever. The powertrain may be the result of science, but this right here, oh, this is pure magic. Everything about the steering in this car is incredible from the way the steering wheel looks with its multiple leathers and its stitching and the little carbon fiber inlays down here. It even has a start button right on the wheel. But beyond the way the wheel looks is more important what it does. This has a 12 to one steering ratio. It's roads like this where a crazy fast steering ratio really comes into its own. The Subaru BRZ, which is lauded for its incredible steering, that's 13 to one. This one is on par with like a 911 GT3. I'm not kidding. And as for understeer, thanks to that rear biased all wheel drive system, yeah, it doesn't do that either. It is a true sports car in every sense. It just happens to have four seats and a lot of cargo room. Total capacity is a modest 18.5 cubic feet with the seats up. Our car also came with a handy adjustable rail system, a cargo net, and a 115 volt power outlet in the trunk as part of the optional convenience package. Fold the second row down with a pull of a lever and total capacity expands to 56.5 cubic feet. With the seats folded back up, a full-size adult fits just fine. USB power is also included for charging mobile devices. A large panorama sunroof fills the cabin with natural light. 
Now, as far as everyday amenities are concerned, this Stelvio Quadrifoglio is actually really loaded with really amazing stuff. They didn't just say, oh, we're going to make it a race car and take everything out. No, this car actually has everything that you would expect in a high-end luxury car. It has collision mitigation, lane detection, adaptive cruise control, blind spot warnings. I mean, really, this is just as good as anything from Mercedes or BMW, to be honest. Heck, even Audi. I have memory seat locations, a Harman Kardon stereo system, and finally, we get Apple CarPlay. Now, it's kind of funny here because it's a very wide screen, and that means you get more icons across the top. When you're so used to seeing CarPlay be the same uh, aspect ratio on every screen, to see it kind of here in CinemaScope, it's kind of funny. Now, over in the middle cluster here is a really useful setup. We have a tack on the left, we have a speedo on the right. Um, in the middle is a multi-function display, and that multi-function display changes depending on which drive mode you're in. I also have heated seats as well as a heated steering wheel. No cooled seats though, which is an odd omission, I think. Then there's this interior. Nothing looks as good as this. Yes, there are a few little quibbles, like a little bit of glue seeping out here, and to be honest, this shifter, the plastics around it, I don't like them. But the overall feel of this interior with the metal and the carbon fiber and the red and the black and the leathers and the steering wheel, I don't think there's a cooler interior you can buy today. There are better interiors, but nothing is as cool as this. And this does have the optional black seats, which I think were only about $100 extra. Totally worth it. I like the red and the black, but I don't want too much red. Uh, this pulls a little of that red out and adds a little bit more of the neutral black that creates a really balanced and aggressive looking interior. And then there's the looks of this vehicle on the outside. Does anything else look quite as incredible? It does have a slightly bulbous back, but I think that the little accent lines really trim it out nicely. And then on the hood, you can definitely tell this is the Quadrifoglio because of the gills cut in the hood line. It really makes for a very interesting looking vehicle that is aggressive without being too showy. Now, we do have a lot of different safety systems here. One of my favorites is adaptive cruise control. Here, I just hit the button to start cruise control. I set it at the speed I want, and now I'm following that Honda in front of me. Now, this does have lane detection, but it won't bump you into your lanes. It will only notify you when you're going out of the lane, which honestly, I think is fine. So right now, my target is set for 25. The person in front of me is apparently doing a little faster than 25. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump up to 35. And then we should match the speed with a set distance. My foot isn't on the brake. I am merely doing steering inputs. Now he's slowing down and the vehicle here should slow down as I get closer. There it is. It's keeping that safety cushion between me and the Honda Clarity in front of me. Now, one of the neat things about this system that not all systems do is it'll actually bring the vehicle all the way to a stop and then start up again when the vehicle in front of me moves. Many systems will deactivate immediately as soon as you go below 20 miles per hour. Not this one, and that's nice. In fact, uh, he's coming up to a stop and I'm not touching a brake or anything. Let's see what this does. Come to a complete stop, and then he pulls up, but I do have to stop myself because it is a crosswalk. Okay, oh, and that thing, the engine shut off. And now we go again, and now I'm gonna go ahead and set speed, and we'll do a target of 35. Zero to 60, Alpha claims 3.6 seconds, which is very close to anything you could find at a Stuttgart. And based on my personal experiences, I have no reason to doubt them. This thing is fast incredibly fast, mind-blowingly fast. Power, handling, looks, they're all deeply impressive in this vehicle. But the brakes, 
that's a touchier subject, quite literally. Uh, they are super touchy. You put them on a little bit and they grab with gusto. Now that is in part because there's six pots up front and four pots on back, which is huge. on a road that is more like the traditional Italian countryside roads and you really push this car, the brakes are perfect. I have no problem with the brakes, except for when you're starting to drive home and you're on the freeway and you need to kind of be a little bit more softer with the brakes. Yeah, they are a little touchy. I will give it that. Price as you see it here is $85,890. Now, what is as good and as fast as this in this price range? Pretty much nothing. You could compare it to a Porsche Macan, and then there's also that little Mercedes. However, I think probably the closest comparison to this one would actually be the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, because you can get that with a 707 horsepower engine for $10 more than this one as equipped. Yeah, that's right. That is if you can find a Trackhawk that is not grossly overpriced at the dealership. I've driven both. I prefer the Quadrifoglio. I think it's a better all-arounder. However, there is something really compelling about that Trackhawk. When I drove it at Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca, it just blew me away with how capable and how fun it was to drive. However, it is a much more brutish driving experience. Not only does this car look sophisticated, people perceive it as sophisticated. So yes, there is something to be said about driving an image and the alpha image, it engages people with something that's new and unique and quite frankly, just an amazing car. that this has been my first look at the 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio. It is a vehicle that is so good, they should have sent a poet. So beautiful. Beautiful. Be sure to subscribe right here for more great videos. Also, download our free apps for Apple TV and Roku. See you next time.